Hello, WordPress people, and welcome to this video on visual regression testing for WordPress. So if you haven't heard of visual regression testing, what this is, is a way to see how your code changes have visually affected your website or app or whatever um, in a really kind of easy to see way. So we're not we're not talking about like unit tests or functional tests. It's literally take a screenshot of a a state of of your project, make some changes, take another screenshot of the state of the project, and then compare the two. Now why might you want to do this? Well what I've found more and more uh, throughout working on WordPress sites is as they get more complex especially like towards the end of projects and you start making changes to your CSS, for example, and you might be trying to just fix a module um, with a slightly broken layout and you end up making a change that has effects that you haven't seen. So uh, you might change like a global setting and you don't really know uh, how that's affected other modules, other pages, other layouts. Um, on the website, and it's very, very hard to test. You don't want to have to visually or manually go through a website page by page every time you make a small CSS change, for example. Uh, but you do want the peace of mind to know that you can make changes to your CSS or HTML without uh, those unintended consequences being pushed live and embarrassing you in front of your clients. And this is where visual regression testing comes in really useful. So as you can see on my screen here, um, and I'll show you exactly how to get this all set up. Um, I've got a visual regression testing tool set up here, and I'm looking at the difference between my reference and my test. Um, so and in this case, I'm using my scrubber to kind of visually go between the differences, but I could also use this diff tool, which highlights in this kind of hot pink color uh, what the differences between the two screenshots are. So you can see that very quickly, you would be able to scan through a number of these screenshots and pick up um, errors uh, that you might not notice if you were just manually like going through a site. You might, you might have forgotten, for example, that these... Um, these columns should be full height. So when you go through the site and look at it like this, you might think that looks fine, but you might not pick up on it. But actually the visual regression tool will pick up on the fact that that was a difference. So the good news is that this only takes a few minutes to set up uh, and get going. And there's a few pre prerequisites. Uh, one is to have Node installed. The other is to have NPM installed. And once those two things are set up, um, I think you're pretty much just good to go. And let me show you how quick it is to get started. So first of all, I would go to this website. So it's github.com forward slash garris, G-A-R-R-I-S, forward slash backstop J-S. Uh, and this is the library that I'm going to use. Um, I've tried other ones. I tried Percy. It was working for me for a while, but then I came back to it and things had changed and broken and it looks a little bit more complicated. But the great thing about Backstop.js is uh, it's free. <laughs> so you, just, you can run it locally. You can test locally. You can also test live websites. Um, so yeah, it's, it's free and it doesn't require any other tools. You might want to use this as part of your continuous integration process. I don't. I'm just doing this as a kind of ad hoc uh, when I feel like I've made a change that I want to just double check um, that I can. So I'm going to set this up on a project uh, which I already have. This is a local project um, that we've been working on. And uh, you can see here it's a local, local address. Um, and I've also got it here just to be browser synced. So I'm going to test this site. I haven't set up Backstop.js on this site ever. Uh, so I'm going to be doing this from scratch uh, using the instructions on the GitHub page here. So if I just scroll down the page a little bit, uh, we will get to installation. 
Okay. So the first thing, uh, it says global installation, which is recommended. I will go with the recommended option. Uh, I'm just going to copy this. As I said, you need NPM installed already. And let's just jump into my code editor. So what I've done is I've actually seeded into my theme here. Um, you will want to consider your version control setup here. So you probably don't want to version control uh, everything that Backstop does and creates. Um, so I usually wouldn't put it in a theme because it is version control, but you could get ignore it. But just something to consider is you might want to think about where this goes. But effectively, it could run from any directory within your project. Um, but I'm going to just add it to the theme in this case. So uh, I'm in my theme, which is steering point. And I'm just going to copy in that uh, command. And I'm going to hit enter. And it looks like something promising is happening. Let's just let that do its thing just for a moment. Let's come back to that. So after that, um, it's you have to initialize your project. And the command for that is backstop init. So I've come back to my code here, and it looks like everything has installed correctly. So now I can type backstop in it. Uh, and I'll just let you watch what happens in here. So you may have missed it, but two things I think have happened. One is it's created a file called backstop.json and the other a directory backstop data. And if we go into that directory, uh, we've got some extra folders here and you'll see soon that some, some more directories will actually be created in here as well. Um, so just to click on backstop.json, because this is the next thing we have to set up and I'm just going to slightly minimize my terminal window. Okay, so I haven't actually played around with all the settings in this file yet and lots of these are actually optional. Um, but I will go through what I'm aware of and uh, what I've learned so far. I may do a more advanced version of this video sometime in the future. So the first thing I'm concerned with is viewports. So what Backstop can let you do is actually test on different viewports. And you can set up as many as you want here. So, I mean, we've got phone and tablet. It makes sense to me to add in another one here called Desktop. Uh, let's go for like 1440 by 900. The height actually I'm not using. Um, I'll come to that in a minute. The on before script and on ready script, I do not touch at this point. Um, and the next thing that we need to be wary of and make some changes to is scenarios. So scenarios uh, is an array of these different scenarios and each one is effectively like a page or a module within a page that you want to do the test for. So the example here is the backstop.js homepage. Um, cookie path, I don't know if that's required or if that uh, defaults to something. You might, may be able to remove that. Uh, I'll keep it in for now just for reference. Um, but the main thing we need want to change, and the only thing that you have to change here, um, or the label, uh, and the URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to steering point because that's the name of the website. Uh, I will do the homepage and then we want to change the URL to, to the URL that we are going to be testing. So let me load this up. I'll grab my local test URL and I'll replace that. So I'm going to be testing my homepage that we saw. Um, I'll come to some more of these in just a moment. Um, I'm not sure what they all do yet. Uh, and I'm actually just going to leave the rest of that as it is. And let's see what happens when I run the next command, which is backstop reference. So what backstop, backstop reference is hopefully going to do is to create screenshots for each of the scenarios and each of the viewports. Um, let's just check, has that worked? Still doing its thing. There we go. 
Uh, let's jump back into backstop data. And here we can now see that there's a bitmaps reference directory. And within that, we've got three screenshots. Um, so, and if we look at their names, uh, steering point homepage phone, steering point homepage tablet, and desktop. So we've got our three viewports and we've got our one scenario. So now let's make a change to the site. So we'll just quickly go and view the site again. I'll do it because this will uh, live reload. Um, and what we're going to do is just going to take one of the, the, the global uh, CSS variables that I have. And I think that's usually set to about 10 pixels. Um, I'm going to supersize that to 40 pixels. Uh, let's see if we, okay, so you can see that make a change. The let some of the layouts are broken a little bit. Loads of supersized spacing now on on the page compared to this. So you can see that there has been a visual difference. And I'm going to go back into the terminal here, and I'm going to type in backstop test. Hit enter. Excellent. So that opens up a new browser tab for us, uh, which is our backstop.js report. It tells us that there are three tests, all of which have failed, which is what I would expect. Um, and it shows us the reference um, image, the test image, and the difference between each. And as you can see, that's fairly different. Um, so what we're going to do, let's just go to the home page, for example, and click on diff. And you can see that it's showing us that there's a quite a big difference between elements. And this is because I've you know, changed that um, from 10 pixels to 40 pixels or 30 pixels. And it's, yeah, it's made a really, really big difference to the spacing. If I open up the scrubber, you can see that really nicely. So close that up again. And you know what? There it is. It's working. Uh, super, super useful. So the next thing I'm going to do, that is just for the home page, and that's great. But um, so it's the home page on the three different um, three different viewports. So if we go back to our backstop JSON file, we might, for example, want to add another page, and I will need to. I will need to grab another page from the site. Let me grab. It's a good one. Okay. Let's do, I'll call it steering point about. And I will change that URL. And actually, I'm just going to test. Getting rid of everything else. Now we have two pages to test on three different viewports. Um, so we need to create a new reference because we don't have a reference for the about page. So I'm going to set backstop reference. And I'm going to ch change this back to whatever its default was. So the reference will be in the broken state now, and the test will actually be in the correct state. And I can do backstop test. So I'm just hitting the up arrow to get back to a command that I've um, used before. And we wait for the browser window to open up. All six have failed, which is correct because they were all different. And let's see what we've got. So we've got the home page, phone, tablet, desktop, and then we've got the about page here. Let's have a look at that. And we can see that it's gone from this super spaced out version on the left to the correct version again on the right, but that's not it. So you might find that this gets a little bit unwieldy uh, and you might have lots of different components uh, and modules that you'd like to test and maybe isolate. And we can do that too. Back to our backstop.json file. And I'm gonna grab this first version again and just because I have some more of the options that I'm interested in, I'm going to put steering point 
better. The URL is correct. Ready selector. So I want to go to selectors, and I think it's going to be site header. And I am just going to double check that before I run everything. Pretty sure it's site header. Yeah, class site header. You can see it there. Okay. Um, and I can delete everything else again just for a moment. Just remove that trailing comma. It's really different there. And I'm going to, again, set up my references because this one doesn't have a reference yet, the header. And I'm going to then make a change. Add that again. M need to make sure those changes have actually taken place. I think they have. And I'll run my test again. So they all failed, which is correct. And then so we've got our home page, home page, home page, about page, about page, about page. And here we have our header. So phone, tablet, and desktop. You can see it needs some work at some various levels here. But again, you can see that this this is working uh, really well to tell the differences. Uh, and I've just raised raise the issue that the changes have, that I've made have affected these these modules and these templates. Um, there's more. <laughs> Let's just jump back into the JSON file again. So one other thing that I was playing with, or a couple of other things I want to want to show you. One is this mismatch threshold. So this is the threshold at which um, it will say that a test has passed or failed. So in this case, if there's a 0.1% difference between the two screenshots, it will fail. Um, we can change this to whatever we want. So we can have a higher tolerance or a lower tolerance for differences. Um, so that one's kind of important. And the other stuff that I would recommend playing with that I've just started to play with are these. So for example, delay. So if you know that it takes a few moments for your page to load correctly, you might want to add a delay in here. Um, you can hide and remove selectors. So for example, if there's a dynamic part of a, a live site that you're loading that you know is going to change. So for example, you're pulling in a Twitter feed uh, or something that you know is dynamic and will change that would fail your tests nearly every time. You can hide that if you want to. So, uh, And then we can also set up hovers and clicks. So as an example, on the... Um, on this website, if I wanted to, if I wanted to test, this is in its broken state, but if I wanted to test what the um, mobile menu looked like, um, it requires a click. So I could run, run the test after that has been clicked and after a delay. So I would add the click selector in here would be like dot hamburger or something like that. And post interaction wait, I could put a number of milliseconds in there. So there's lots and lots to play with here. It's much more powerful than that. I literally stumbled across this this morning and had it set up within minutes. And I was really excited about it. This is going to be a game changer for me. Um, and hopefully for you, I'd love to hear what you think. Please write your write something in the comments below if you have any questions or ideas or thoughts uh, about this video. And uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye.